Hey everyone, this is Ross, and today we're going to be fertilizing all the container fruit trees. We talked about in a prior video what exactly we're going to be using. I guess we're going to go over that again. But I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing in this video. We have our little mixture here of diatomaceous earth, ironite, and lime. And then we have some liquid fertilizer here in the watering can. We have to fill this up probably numerous times to feed all these container plants. Uh, normally throughout the season in prior years, I had put on a slow release fertilizer, which is like these little beads and they break down and slowly release fertilizer over time. Now we're not doing that this year. We're going completely going in the direction of liquid fertilizer because I really want to automate this because on the other side of the house, and I've done this in a, also in a previous video, is we showed you guys the fertilizer injector, which is an auto siphon. So if I had my mixture of fertilizer here in a can or a bucket, you stick that line in this bucket and it will automatically siphon out a certain amount of fertilizer into your water. And then you can then water these plants with that water that has the fertilizer in it. Or in a better situation, you use drip irrigation and it goes directly into the drip irrigation lines. So I wanna just mention that this is extremely important to do this now, early in the season. Now that our trees have finally woken up, this is really the time. It's gonna make a huge difference in our trees about three months from now because Three months from now, we're gonna be somewhere in August, maybe in July, and we're not really going to be feeding it anymore. And our trees are gonna be huge at that point. They're gonna have put on a lot of growth so that sometime in June, sometime in July, we can come in here and we can pinch these branches. And by pinching them, we're gonna be inducing that fruit. Now, the more growth we can get, before the time we pinch, the better. That means we're gonna have more fruit, the more growth at every single node here along these branches will be a fruit if everything goes right. So the more we can feed now, the more growth we get now, the more heat there is now, the better off we are later in the season. That's really a huge part of production and getting good production off of these container fruit trees. By the way, we're not doing this in the ground. By no means are we doing any fertilization. We may do some micronutrients. We will do some diatomaceous earth and we will do some mycorrhizae. But other than that, absolutely nothing with the in-ground fig trees here. Even the ones we just planted that are very young. Fig trees fruit better in less fertile soils. Also in my climate, the less growth they have in the ground, the better chance they have at hardening off and surviving the winter. But a container is a different story. We've talked a lot about this. Containers only have so much nutrients. If we're not supplying the nutrients to this limited amount of soil, the tree will starve and it will cease to grow. It will not perform well. I've seen it myself. I had completely forgotten about a single tree one year. And I realized it wasn't growing and I said, what is wrong with the tree? So I inspected the soil and realized, oh, I missed the fertilizer. There was no fertilizer on this tree. And therefore it did absolutely nothing for me. It barely grew, it didn't fruit. It was a complete waste of time. So I just wanna really stress the point that we should be doing this now and that this is really important. So what we have here, I wanna show you we have something called ironite. This is not gonna cover all the micronutrients that exist, but that's really what this is for. Get in there some basic micronutrients as well as some other ones that we may not have. Um, you can also use other products called green sand, rock dust. It all kind of does a similar thing. We wanna cover all of our bases, just like humans. We have nutrients that we need and if we're missing one nutrient, we're gonna have an issue. Okay, it's the same thing with plants. We need to be covering all the nutrients. We also have lime, and this is a really good source of calcium and magnesium, I believe. Yep, so this, I don't care what you use, as long as you're giving your plant some kind of calcium, some kind of magnesium. You can also use gypsum. 
you can use Epsom salts. It doesn't really matter. The thing you have to worry about with lime is that it can raise the pH a bit too much. We want a neutral pH. We don't want to have something too basic or something too acidic with our figs. And really across the board with every single plant that I grow in containers, other than blueberries. Blueberries need an acidic soil below five. So you don't want to use lime on your blueberries, that's for sure. Um, now the diatomaceous earth here, you can see this is food grade. They give this stuff for animals, it's organic. This stuff has silica in it. Silica is a really important supplement and nutrient that's actually found all throughout the earth's crust. It's one of the most common, I think, nutrients in the earth's crust, but many soils nowadays do not have enough silica or any. So I'm coming in here, especially in the potted plants, giving them that silica. This helps with cold hardiness, disease resistance, hardening up the branches. Um, overall, I think it's a great nutrient to use. I will not be doing this ever again, probably without some kind of silica. We've also used rice holes in the past. Rice holes add some silica to the soil. But the diatomaceous earth, I think is really good. So what we've done here is we've really mixed up all diatomaceous earth, ironite, and the lime. And what I'm simply doing here is taking about a fourth of a cup. This is actually two fourths of a cup. This would be actually great for a 10 gallon size pot. Come down in here in a 10 gallon size pot, put that nutrients on there, and just move this around a bit. And that is the micronutrients for this year. We do this every single year on an annual basis. Two fourths cup per 10 gallons or one fourths cup per five gallons. What we also have here is some soil because if we don't have enough soil in the pot, like this tree here may need a little bit more soil, we can add that. Um, the soil certainly settles. If we're removing mulch, which we probably are, except for on these jujubes, we want to keep the jujubes a bit colder. At least that was the plan. Same thing with this chi. It doesn't matter too much at this point, but with the figs particularly, they need a lot of heat. Removing that mulch is going to help warm up the soil a lot earlier in the season. So when we remove the mulch, which we've done to every single tree out here, we just need to make sure that these trees may not need any more soil. It's always a good practice, I think, if you're really taking this seriously. Add a layer of worm castings on top, or add a layer of compost on top. However, that compost, that worm castings, is going to act as a form of mulch and cool, and cool the soil. So, be careful. Uh, but we've got the soil on hand if we need it. And we're literally just taking this cart and kind of driving it around <laughs> to all these different fruit trees on the patio and feeding them. Now the second part here, which is probably the most important part of all of this, is the actual fertilizer. This is um, Jack's Professional Soluble Fertilizer. It's pretty similar to miracle Grow. let's be honest. It's really similar except nutrients are a bit different. This is 94515. This stuff's really good for root growth and blooming. Um, and there's also a whole bunch of different other micronutrients similar to ironite. So ironite may not be too necessary depending on the, the fertilizer that you're using it may cover a lot of that a lot of your bases it tells you exactly how much to use I'm not going to talk about that just read the label and that's what we're doing we're going around we're giving each tree the appropriate amount of fertilizer I'm going to do this probably next week as well I'm going to do this today also a week from now and maybe a week after that and then we're going to go to a normal schedule of every other week of a fertilization with the liquid soluble fertilizer um, until about August 1st. Anything after that, we're pushing it. We want our trees to stop growing. They've already fruited and we want them to harden up their growth. The last piece of this is the micro grow, which is a soluble mycorrhizae um, inoculant. This is really, really good stuff from Paul Stamets, his company Fungi Perfecti. It's got endo and ectum mycorrhizae, all kinds of other different good bacteria. This is really important. And 
A lot of times your fertilizers, you can use organic fertilizers too. It just takes a bit longer to break down. I'd recommend using the Alaska fish fertilizer, but some animals come in here and can mess with that if you uh, you got animals in the area. But let's say you are using organic fertilizer. A lot of that has mycorrhizae in it. So you may not have to use that, but what is a good idea, I think, for even our garden beds, you can see the garden beds here. Any perennial in the ground, I think what I'm gonna do this year is add some soluble inoculant of the mycorrhizae and just water that in to all of these plants. And that's gonna create that mycorrhizae uh, relationship with the roots. And that's gonna help these weak trees, especially these potted plants, uptake water, uptake nutrients. It's a real nice symbiotic relationship. And once we do that once, once they bind to the roots of a plant, you don't have to do it again. So this is a one and done thing. And that's exactly why in our garden beds we have to keep roots growing in our garden beds at all times. We need to have some sort of root material in there. We will probably do a cover crop this year in the garden beds to keep that relationship between the mycorrhizae and the roots going. So that's really it. Uh, I just wanna show you, I guess, the fertilizer, how much we're using. It's a five gallon size pot. I think that's all I'm gonna do. Particularly because these trees don't need any water. <laughs> They're already really well, well watered in. We don't really have to do this too much. This one is about a half, this one's about a 2.5 gallon size pot. That's all we'll do. This is another five gallon. I just wanna cover the top of the soil. I would say this is maybe only six ounces of water maybe less that's it we're not going to go too crazy because we're doing this every week for about three weeks you also want to get this around the root zone it's pretty useless if it doesn't hit the roots of these plants all right guys that is the video please follow us on facebook instagram and twitter uh, check us out on the on the website there on the blog rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog We have a nice little blog post actually labeling out The entirety of the steps that I'm taking for the fig trees this year From day one of the season to the end of the year So we are going to follow along with the videos But if you are unsure of what's going on you can always check that timeline on the blog post so yeah, subscribe for actually the newsletter on the blog post, so that way you'll know when new blog posts have been um, released, new information. Also, if you got this far and you found some really good value in this, please consider following us on Patreon. It really does help. I think for every thousand views of a video, <laughs> I get about $7. If you contribute only a dollar to Patreon, believe it or not, you're helping out way more than just watching my videos every week every day if you watch my videos every single day for a month one dollar is more than doing that which is kind of insane to think about but all right guys no pressure i'll talk to you all soon see you for tomorrow's video take care everyone